I grew up around the water. The Pacific Ocean, it's my home. A place where I can hear God. A place where I can do what I've been created for. I've been surfing these waves all my life. It's what I know, it's what I do. There are only two things I need to surf. Great waves and a well-shaped board. The board is key, uniquely shaped for specific waves and conditions. Long boards for smaller waves with longer turns, short boards for better waves, more high performance. Every board has a fingerprint designed by a master craftsman. Young guys and girls are the same as that surfboard, created on purpose and for a purpose. I often wonder what part I play in the next generation of surfers. What do I have to contribute? How can I make a difference? I've seen success, but what I really want is significance. I feel it's important to pass on what I've learned and experienced to the next generation. I want to see them avoid critical mistakes and help shape their passion and calling. But how do I do that? Where do I start? I decided to visit a friend who is a master shaper. He knows what it takes to start with raw materials and craft something incredible. This is a story about shaping. My lessons take place with world-renowned shaper Doc Lausch in his Huntington Beach shop, Surf Prescriptions. It all starts with a blank, foam that has been molded to make a core. When a shaper chooses the blank, he sees the potential and visualizes the completed board cutting or planing on the surface of the wave. You could say each blank has a board waiting to be revealed, waiting to realize its purpose. Shaping is the art of taking something undefined and crafting it into something meaningful. The right tools are part of the craft. Quality tools means quality work. Template, handsaw, planer, sander. Different tools for each part of the process. Each shaper has his favorite tools that he skillfully handles with precision. Shaping involves knowing and using just the right tools.
Shaping is messy. It requires getting really dirty. Foam dust gets everywhere. Even though modern machines have helped to mass produce boards, allowing shapers to remain clean, the art of hand shaping is still considered the best process. The shaper puts his hands to the board, feeling the curves and the contours. By touch and sight, the shaper can focus on the form of the board, making slight corrections where need be. Then when it's time to glass, it gets really messy. Fabric is placed on the board. Then colors and resins are mixed in. There's a method to the madness, squeegeeing the resin through the cloth from nose to tail and then around the rails. Shaping is messy business that ultimately produces something beautiful. The process is not something that happens quickly. For a quality board to be shaped, it requires time. Hand shaping is a methodical process. Everything has to be even. No detail can be overlooked. The nose, the tail, the rails, the volume. Everything has to be perfect. All along the process, the shaper carefully checks each step. If the process is rushed, there's a danger that the board will be weak and flawed. Shaping requires patience and a careful attention to detail. From the start, the board has been created with a purpose. And that purpose is to be in the water. Not placed on a shelf as a trophy or hidden in a dusty storage. The surfboard is created, formed, and shaped for the purpose of surfing, sliding, and walking on water. Whether it's a 10-0 for San Onofre or a 6-0 for Huntington, each board has been shaped with care and purpose. Every shaper knows that after all the work, ultimately, it's not about holding on, but sending it out 
to experience the thrill it was created for. I'm grateful for what Doc has taught me. He has shown me what it takes to shape. As I reflect on the gifts I've been given, I consider the responsibility I have to the young Groms to take what I've learned and experienced and pass it on to the next generation. My name is Brad Edinger, and I am a shaper. <laughs>